Eric Wiggins. Nice to meet you. He's Finally. In the house. I know we've been trying to do this for a few years now. Yeah. I ran a podcast. This is a different podcast from the one I initially reached out to you about. Mm -hmm. Um that was a few years ago, but I've been following your your story, your your TikTok or, or Instagram account, which has now evolved into a TikTok account as well. Um it's pretty fascinating. Yeah. And I need to know where this idea came from. Like there's the keto element, which I'm sure played a big role and then you've turned into a business. So I, I want to hear it all. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, I guess I could start from the, the very beginning. Yeah. I spent my whole life pretty overweight and, uh, I got to the point where I just, nothing was working. And then Speaking of people in Austin, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast in like 2016 and keto was the topic on the episode I was listening to. It was the founder of Primal Kitchen, if you've ever heard of that. Oh, yeah, we have their so, ketchup in our fridge. Yes. So uh, that kind of put me on to the keto low carb lifestyle, ended up losing some weight with that. And then by 2018, I was like getting into the Gary V YouTube videos. Let me try making my own page. Hmm. So I had like three different ideas for which direction I was going to go. I had like a, maybe I'll do some like fashion. That was not something I was interested in. It was yeah. just, all right, that seems to be popular. And then keto was one of the other ones and that one started to take off. So I was like, all right, let me run with this because that's the most authentic one anyway. And then it just started blowing up because, so at the time, nobody was putting their recipes in the caption. When mm. you post food content back in the day, you want to send people to your blog yeah. so you can get the the traffic, the ad revenue, whatever, because there was no money on social media, at least for like food creators back then. So I was like, let me just put the recipe in the caption. And then before you know it, everyone's sharing with their friends, like, check this guy out, check yeah. this recipe out. And it just started blowing up. So eventually got into video. And then uh, it was really awkward at first because anyone. All right. So now we all know the whole TikTok era where everyone gets in front of the camera and does stuff. But mm -hmm. back then, like five years ago, it was very uncommon to just start talking to a camera. Yeah. I mean, so I did that and then that just took it up to a whole nother level where now I wasn't just gaining followers, but I was like getting brand deals and stuff because there was a face associated with the recipes. Yeah. So that kind of took it to another level. And then, yeah, I like from there I moved to Austin because I, I was finally making some money. It's like... Well, where were you living at that time? Oh, yeah. So my life story or whatever, I came from Ohio, grew up, born and raised, small town near Dayton, Cincinnati area. Okay. And uh, I was living with my parents at the time when I was building Keto Snacks, driving Grubhub. And... Uh, it's like a Gary Vee story. Right yeah. There. Yeah. I, I would literally listen to the Gary V audiobooks, YouTube videos. Yeah while delivering you know buffalo wild wings and uh yeah so came to austin in 2020 because like i said i had the audience like the first year or two but then when my face was part of it that's when brands started being like all right this could be you know something we could throw some money at and uh so so what was that evolution because like you said it was not normal for people to you know, flip turn, you flip the camera around on themselves and be the the star. Mm -hmm. um, deliver information that wasn't normal even four or five years ago. So, what was your content like in the early posts? Because it's evolved into. I mean, they're hilarious, and we're going to get into some of that <laughs> because uh, I think your approach is different, which is obviously why you built the following you have. But what was the content like? in the early stages, because it, it has to evolve to, to stay relevant. Yeah, so at the very beginning, it was just a picture of a recipe with, uh, sometimes it's so insane. If you think of algorithms and social media, like what worked in 2018, Yeah, 
it was usually a, a food picture and then the recipe in the caption. But sometimes I would just write like in my notes app, keto ice cream. Here's the ingredients. Here's how to make it. Screenshot it. Post that as a picture. That was the post. And it would get great engagement. It's completely insane. So go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, I'm... Oh, yeah. So so that was like the first iteration of keto snacks just take a picture of food post it sometimes there's no picture of food just the recipe yeah and uh and then after that it was like man i gotta start i gotta get on camera like if i'm gonna be more than just posting pictures of food i have to get in front of the camera so i just went live and uh instagram live just started answering questions and that got me very comfortable with making video. So that was my 2019 strategy was still post the pictures of food, but go live and talk to people. And that's really the best way to build like a, a community, you know? Yeah. Because you're engaging with the people first see just pictures mm-hmm. and screenshots. And they're like, is this a robot? Yeah. posting and then you start showing your face and they're like oh it's a it's a guy it's a normal guy yeah and he makes these recipes and eats these recipes and, and can answer our questions so i mean yeah that was genius kind of stepping stones and ways to adapt to what social media was turned into yeah so it went from pictures to live streams to then 2020 is when i really got serious about TikTok and that style of content. Yeah. So I remember my first few recipe videos. Like I said, at the time I was living with my parents, driving Grubhub and uh didn't have my own space, whatever. We had a we had a Doberman who would eat food off the counter because it's just a giant dog and he could reach it. Yeah. So I had to shoot these recipe videos and when I would go to the other room or like reach over to grab something i'd have to like run back to protect the food oh my god and it was just like i just remember those days of it was such a struggle to get a video shot and edited yeah and i didn't have the workflow down and i was just not used to it so that was all like overhead food videos so is this like you said 2020 so is this like your lockdown and your your parents house yeah or you had moved to austin by then no so 2019 i was going live and then Towards the end of 2019, early 2020 is when I started really doing the recipe videos. Okay. And then that was like an extra boost towards it becoming a business. Because at first, it was just like a community. And then when I was talking on the lives, there was like a lot of friendship that I built there. But it it wasn't translating to much. Mm -hmm. Because it was just like, it was just social media. You know, I was just being social. But then that paired with the recipe videos gave me the extra boost to be like wait I, i'm making a living income doing this so then i like just on three weeks notice i just i had like a few brand deals lined up and i was like all right i can do it so three weeks notice i got the covid special on an apartment on riverside which is like right next to the boardwalk yeah. and uh it was way out of my budget too which is a very pivotal moment for my life because I was looking at apartments in my price range based on what I was making. And I was like, there's no trails and walking distance. They don't have kitchen islands. Even if they do, they're not that nice. They have bad reviews. And I was like, let me just add a few hundred bucks a month to what I think I could pay and see what the options are. And I found the perfect apartment. It, what sold me was they had like cabanas at the pool. And I was like, oh, luxury. Yeah. So I went there and then my content just, it leveled up to like a whole new level. Well, what you did was you invested in your business. It's the same, you know, same concept of instead of renting out a studio somewhere, you, you know, spent a little bit more per mm-hmm. month, but it wasn't. Yeah, it turns into not a personal living expense. It's your business expense. Yeah. And you see that obviously paid off. Yeah. So what what's interesting when you're talking about like the, you know, the steps you took and in these videos, you started doing things that other people weren't 
doing like people are hiding i think like in real estate you see a lot of times agent and, th- and back in the day when i was posting video or when i was posting content on instagram i was doing the same thing like just a picture of a house mm. and i would give some details and one of the big things was always like well you don't want to give them the address or the price because you want them to ask for that mm. and then it became like why not give that to them like it's you're providing value yeah and you saw your competitors that were withholding mm. information yes to try to get more value by sending people to their blog which yeah it drives traffic to your blog and maybe they were making money on on the back end on products they were selling or whatever but your approach was provide and again it's a gary v thing yeah provide as much value upfront for free mm-hmm. and then the business side will come yeah well that's like the only way it works yeah. is I go to these masterminds in Austin and I talk to all these people who are coaches and they they have these programs they're selling and it's always about, all right, I don't have an audience, but I want to make money. So they're like, let me try and build an audience and make money off of it. Mm-hmm. So they, they make the course first before they have an audience. Yeah. And then the few followers they get, they DM them like, hey, would love to offer you coaching. And it's like, you might make some money like that, but you're never going to build impact, build a business. It, it's like, it, it just like, it doesn't register in my mind that you could expect to, it's like an MLM. Yeah. How could you expect to make friends if as soon as you meet someone, you're like, oh, by the way, I, I'm working with Amway. I would love for you to sign up with us. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's what the masterminds you're going to, this is stuff like you're, currently going and doing these things and learning about business yeah so the masterminds are great and the masterminds aren't (laughs) the the whole like coaching business yeah it's just there are people who have that coaching strategy that will show up Mm. and some of them are doing great and i'm friends with them so but the ones who aren't seeing results it, it just it's like all right put the audience first and then you'll see results because what I do isn't think about making money. I think about providing the most value. And like you said, that's a Gary Vee thing. It's like yeah. those books are just ingrained in my mind because I, I'll tell this story too. So in 2020, I also put out a cookbook and, uh, and to fast forward a lot, I ended up finding a girlfriend, getting engaged, having starting a family, all of that. Mm-hmm. But when me and Anna, my fiance, first started talking, she would tell me, what are you doing? Why are you just DMing people the the PDF to your book? Mm-hmm. And I would say on lives, I would be like, look, if you can't afford the book, just send me a DM and I'll email you the PDF for free. Yeah, Because at, at my core, I just genuinely think, hey, this person should have the information that's in the book if they can't afford it. Yeah. But the the average person I think it's almost like a like a flaw that I'm just so willing to give everything away. But it, it all comes back. But that's that's just my instinct. Yeah. So that must explain why it's working. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, people sniff that out right away if if they feel like you're just doing it to get the next sale. Mhm then they're going to catch on to that. But you've clearly, so you've got on Instagram, like you're nearing like a million yeah. Instagram followers. I would imagine reels have been amazing for you. Yeah. Um, and the, the type of videos you make, TikTok, you've got like 500,000 or four, four or 500. Yeah, 500,000 500, on TikTok. Um, and again, for like some people look at that and their, their vanity metrics, you know, mm-hmm. um, for you it's clearly important to build an audience and give people info so so you learned about the keto diet but there's a very big difference between like learning about keto starting a keto diet and losing weight and then like building a business off of it so where was that point where you're like i'm doing this now i want to like were you just eager to share the met like spread the message and what happened to you so yeah like i said when i first started i i lost the weight and then it was like 
serendipity that at the same time I got really into Gary V and had this idea to to go into social media with like you know you can build a career on social media yeah. so I had that mindset but I wasn't necessarily focused on using keto to make money off of people it was just like I was like if I just share what's working for me and I can build an audience I'm sure it'll just work out yeah and it was like uh it was never methodical like all right I can dm this person and get them to buy this and it was just like let me just like help a lot of people yeah and uh and also part of it was when you start any diet you start telling everyone in your inner circle your family your friends about how amazing it is yeah and it had just gotten to the point where everyone was annoyed with hearing about keto like i would go to easter dinner and i would be like man these chocolate bunnies are killing us <laughs> and everyone's like we don't want to hear that yeah so i was like i need to find a different group of people to tell this to yeah and that's kind of where going live was a big step for me because before it was all dms or the comment section but once i started going live i had a consistent probably 50 or 100 people who would show up every day and uh and those were like my best friends yeah and those people, whether they bought a book or not, they gave me the feeling of, all right, I'm on the right path. Yeah. So that's kind of what really kept me going when I wasn't making money. It was just like, it's like you just want to hang out with your friends, you know, after driving Grubhub all day. Let me go talk to some people. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the the hustle that takes place while you're building something like this, and there's nothing wrong with building a business and making money off of like you have to live right yeah yeah um but you took something that you liked doing and it it became a business i guess when you're asking about the business side of things it still isn't like a so i guess legally speaking it's a s corp okay so it is a business yeah but i'm kind of just like it's almost like I'm a hunter gatherer who's just like, all right, this is the the animal I'm going to chase down today, which would be make a video for my audience. And then maybe four or five times a month, the objective for the day is, all right, make this video, but include this product. And then this brand will pay me to use that product. Yeah. So that's like the the big day where I try to put a little extra effort just to make sure that those brands will come back and I can keep paying the bills and I can, you know, live to see another day. Yeah. So it's like a very day-to-day -day thing. Although I do have some six month or 12 month contracts, I don't have like a, a team or a whiteboard with like objectives and stuff. It's really just almost a Mr. Beast approach where yeah. it's like, just focus on making the best video possible and everything else will follow. But but are you looking to build a big business or is this like for you what you want? I think at some point I would like to have my own product. I mean, I sell cookbooks. Yeah. So that's part of one arm of the business. Brand deals is the other one. That's more of the that's where most of the money comes from. Okay. Probably 70% of it is brand deals. And then for a while we were getting the reels bonus which was great. Mm. And then as soon as they took it away, I had like a month where four or five videos got probably five, 10 million views each. Uh, and I was like, as soon as they take the reels bonus away. Yeah. But, but yeah, I guess my long-term view of my business is to just keep growing, keep doing what I'm doing and eventually have some sort of product. I just don't know what it would be because selling food products is very the margins are very low mm. i mean the storage the shipping like formulating it it's just it's a lot yeah yeah and, and this would be a completely different avenue but like you're a great example of someone who figured out something that they enjoyed something mm -hmm. that had a big impact on them personally started documenting mm -hmm. about it and, and sharing info and then it turned into a business. So it could even be, so like I'm, I used to be an elementary school teacher. 
Mm-hmm. And I got into real estate um, in 2015. And there have been times where I'm like, I enjoy real estate, but I also really enjoy the education mm. side of it. So, you know, there's always realtors that are looking to learn more about whether it's just becoming a new agent, social media, video, like all mm-hmm. that stuff. And it's been something I kind of have procrastinated over the years, but it's something that I'm like, that is a great way to to spread positivity and, and impact more people as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that is true. I do think I get really excited when I tell people about my content strategies, like keto snacks, building it, all of that stuff. Yeah. So I have thought about that as well, where I see these creators who have great stuff to share, especially like, I don't know, I just, I see people who have a great message, they're living the perfect lifestyle, and then they want to build an audience but they just don't have the right approach to their content. Mm. And it's like, if I could just consult with them or, you know, host a mastermind where like 10 creators come. So that's an avenue I've thought about where people who are in food or in health want to make more videos. They just don't know how it's because it's very simple once you get the hang of it. Like if someone just watched me for a day when I make a video, it's like, all right, put the camera here do this with the food. All right, now put yourself in the camera, do this and then show it and that's it. It's not rocket science. But it it seems like it is when you don't do it every day. Exactly. Yeah. Um well, I want to talk about the the style of videos because you have some like <laughs> I don't this is the first time we've met in person. We've mm-hmm. messaged for probably a couple of years on on Instagram about different things, but you seem like kind of a quirky guy, like that's just, I don't know, kind of like the goofy uh, mentality in your videos. Like you'll pronounce words incorrectly. Like, <laughs> and I, I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but it's <laughs> funny. And it'll like make someone go back and watch it again. Maybe that's like part of the strategy, but like what's, what's some of the strategy in, cause like, you know, if you pull up keto snacks with a Z on Instagram, go ro- go watch some of Eric's videos and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about because like the Panda Express one, <laughs> called it like chicken teriyaki or something. <laughs> and I was like, what do you say? So like, what's kind of the thought? Is that just like you being you? Or? Yeah, so I guess growing up, I was always kind of the goofy one. Yeah. And, uh, and it doesn't really show much anymore just on my day-to-day life where... Once I'm close with people, I guess it kind of comes mm-hmm. out. But uh, I guess meeting me and like talking to me, you wouldn't really see it because it's like a very sarcastic where I'll say joking things with a totally straight face. Yeah. And it's like, have you ever saw Nathan for you? Oh, yeah. That's like my sense of humor. So I when I see that. So when I do these videos, I'm thinking like, or actually I'll go back to how it even started of why would I put this in the video in the first place? Yeah. So I said tortilla as tortilla and uh i was just like you know just being dumb one day and then a bunch of people got really mad at me and if they were like authentic um like mexican people who are from mexico and are like hold like tortillas like near and dear to their heart you know i would respect it and be like all right look you're right this is offensive i shouldn't do this but it was like a super white person who's like very much just a normal American, like, yeah, just you know. Probably just a troll. Yeah, right. just a troll. So I was like, you're not even, like, that's not even your culture. Yeah. And you're telling me, I, like, you're getting upset that I said it wrong. So I was like, all right, I'm going to just start mispronouncing a bunch of words wrong. Yeah. And uh, I almost did it to, like, spite them. I was like, all right, yeah, you think tortilla is bad. Wait until you hear me say ricote or tize tizaikai for tzatziki. <laughs> And uh, it just became a thing. But it's funny, and it it when you th- when you talk about like the authenticity and just being genuine, like when someone watches that, some people are gonna be like, "Is this guy an idiot? Like, what did he just say?" <laughs> but then, as you start scrolling through your videos, you start realizing that that's like kind of your thing. Yeah, it's like a theme, and it's it is very authentic because, like I said, I I did it because I 
all right, you think that's bad. Yeah. And then now I think I just have a low tolerance for like hate and negative messages because my fiance made content with me for a while and uh she did this video she's peruvian she was born in peru came here when she was five okay she did like a peruvian recipe and then peruvian tiktok got in the comments and was like telling her that's not how you make it that's wrong and then that was like the end of her social media career so like it spooked her yeah or... like that one went viral got a million views and then the comments were just all hate of oh. people saying that's not real peruvian yeah so that was the end of her social media career and then i realized oh wait people don't like negative attention yeah whereas i i like play into it i think it's funny oh totally so yeah and sometimes it can get like for you you run your own business it's like all food related i've gotten into issues because i'll kind of push the limit as well sometimes on my social media um to be funny i have a similar personality to you like just the dry humor and mm -hmm. people don't always know if i'm joking and you know you'll start seeing in the comments if at a certain point you're like okay this is getting a little out of hand like people are interpreting this way differently than what i meant mm -hmm. um because you had a you had a daughter right yeah recently um Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I've got two daughters and I, I posted a video that people went, it was the, the a female mob basically just tried to cancel me <laughs> and we wound up, especially my business partners, a female. And like, we started getting messages where we we're like, all right, we need to take this down. But wow. Yeah. Um, and I had no bad intentions <laughs> from it. Uh, and I'll tell you off, off camera kind of more about it. But anyway, that and Gary V's big on that too. The negative comments, not letting, you know, TikTok user four eight five two zero be the one that makes you not make any more videos. Yeah, because that can easily happen, and it's easy oh, yeah. to read into that. Think like, do people hate me? Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I also that I've noticed with your videos is, from the recipe standpoint, a lot of times you'll bring like fast food like traditionally unhealthy looking or you know fast food mcdonald's chick-fil-a wendy's you'll bring that stuff into your video and i don't know i do you get negative feedback from that because you're you're promoting like a healthy lifestyle with mm -hmm. keto but then you bring in a what a lot of people think is unhealthy food yeah so so that comes down to a whole nother topic in itself where you have these tiers of people living healthy lifestyles and the very basic entry level keto lifestyle is you just what is the average person eating for lunch they go to mcdonald's they get a big mac and fries and a coke and then that's what they have mm. so if you're an entry level person just trying to get a little healthier what would you do? You're not going to expect them to saute some cabbage and then have salmon and like everything be perfect. Yeah. They're just going to do what they're used to. So you say, hey, just get the burger, take the bun off of it. Instead of the fries, get the side salad and you'll definitely lose some weight. Even if like the science of it is when you do keto, a lot of it is water weight at the very beginning. That's why keto is so appealing to people they're like i want to lose 20 pounds for summer and then they do it for a month and they drop 20 pounds mm. quick and it's like your body is just getting rid of a lot of stored water you'll lose the fat eventually but keto is not this like magical way of eating that is like the miracle cure it's just one lifestyle that works so the beginner level is you just take the bun off your burger and you replace the fries with the side salad so it's like what you've done is you've gotten rid of some processed foods and you've replaced them with vegetables okay so it may not be the healthiest thing but it's still healthier than what they were doing before so and, you, yeah, yeah you're making their their what a lot of people might look like as an unhealthy choice you're giving them ways to make it healthier yeah it's like meeting people where they're at rather than huh. expecting it's like if i'm super broke and in a bunch of debt and then you see these like uh the the investment accounts on social media yeah that are like oh stop buying the starbucks coffee and then oh put 10 grand into this and yeah. it's like the average person they're not buying starbucks every day 
and they don't have 10 grand to spend on your course. Exactly. So what do you expect? It's like you have to meet people where they're at. That's interesting. Because it, when I've watched your videos, I'll see I'm like, he's promoting a healthy lifestyle through keto, but then he's saying to go to McDonald's. But that's not what you're saying. I'm saying if you're already going to McDonald's, here's how to make it a little better. Which is, I think, great because you make it more relatable to more people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, being in Austin, we have a warped view because everyone shops at Sprouts, Whole Foods. Yeah. But coming from Ohio, it's like even the the wealthiest people in my hometown, it was just normal for them to just grab McDonald's on the way home from work. Yeah. So even people who had money to hire a chef and go to the the more like more expensive grocery stores, you know, they just like the box hamburger helper, the McDonald's for dinner. It's like a I think the Midwest like probably in texas just outside of austin it's mm-hmm. like that too where mm-hmm. it's just convenience fast food and then if you look at the obesity rate that kind of explains it it's like that stuff was engineered to just send your brain into like this blissful state so it, it's pretty much like the the lifestyle that everyone is living except a pretty small percentage of people true yeah. and and you see it when you go to the when you go to the grocery store yeah and you know, again, we have two young girls. We try to, to shop as healthily as possible. It is expensive. Mm-hmm. It's expensive HEB. It's twice as expensive going to Whole Foods. And we have, we only have two kids. So it's like if you have a family with three, four kids and you're going to HEB, like a lot of this, I mean, how much are you going to spend? Yeah. $500 a week, $600 a week on groceries. It's, so, it, I mean, that makes sense. And, and you giving that perspective also makes sense for why you yeah, do content around that. Because it, again, makes it more relatable to more people. Yeah. And that's not really even the, because part of me did just grow up eating fast food. Yeah. So, so part, I mean, so did I. Yeah. So part of it is just like, man, I really miss Big Macs. How <laughs> yeah. can I still eat that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I didn't eat, like I played baseball so like when we were traveling game after you know we would yeah we'd get fast food mm-hmm. um i've tried making more of a conscious effort over the last few years to not eat fast food chick-fil-a is still one and i've i've done your buffalo buffalo sauce and the grilled nuggets thing or yeah. the, the regular chick-fil-a <laughs> nuggets um so for someone listening to this that you know, wants to be creative. You have so many different recipes and so many avenues. I mean, you have like stuff with the, the air fryers big for mm-hmm. you. It seems like I still don't have one. I've watched a lot of your stuff and have almost bought it, bought one many mm. times. I just, <laughs> we have no storage in our kitchen, so we don't need any more gadgets, but what are some of your go-to kind of recipes or, or some of your, your favorites and favorites of, of people that, you know, videos you've made that have kind of blown up. So my most viral recipes always involve an air fryer and like two or three ingredients. Mm. My most recent one was I took a chicken tender, just like a raw chicken tenderloin, uh, a pickle spear and a cheese stick. And I wrapped it in bacon and threw it in the air fryer. That one got like 15 million plays. And it's just the idea of, the bacon and cheese are like the comfort of it, you know, and then the the chicken is providing protein and then the pickle just for flavor. It's like you're getting a high protein snack. I mean, maybe depending on there, I won't go too deep into the nutrition side of it because there is a growing community of people who are like no seed oils, just eat all animal fats. Bacon is a superfood, this whole mm. world. I won't get into that, but yeah. Regardless, when you look at it, it's like, oh my God, this is like, this is healthy. I won't say it's healthy, but I'll say it is a good higher protein snack that the average person is probably already eating anyway, like a Chick-fil-A sandwich with bacon and cheese on it. It's like the same thing. You just took the bread out. Yeah. So, uh, so that's one of them. And then another one that went viral recently was I got a donut pan and a funny thing happens when you bake cheese that like crisps up. So I got a donut pan. I put shredded cheese in it with little onion rings and uh, and some chicken and what else was in there? Ranch seasoning. 
and oh, bacon. So and it's like these chicken bacon ranch onion rings. And that was another one that was just like, I don't know how I come up with these ideas. It's just. So are like stuff like that, like the bacon, uh, the bacon wrapped, you know, chicken pickle cheese. Is it like, are you just trying to think of new snacks? Yeah. That's not what I eat on a daily basis. Okay. That's people love it and it's fun to make it. And then if you do find one that you love, you probably may make it on a daily basis, but what I eat on a daily basis is like super simple. What, I could, what does a normal you wake like breakfast to to dessert? Because it sounds like you're a dessert guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what does your day look like? So I wake up. I've recently gotten big on protein. I think it's for anyone who's trying to lose weight or get healthier, or even trying to age more gracefully without worrying about like falling and breaking your hip. Because that's what does it. So uh, not to go too off on a tangent, but as you age, getting enough protein is super important because you your body just starts like losing the muscle mass that's on it. And mm. even if you don't lift weights, you have muscle on your body. That's how you stand up and open doors and things. So you have this certain amount of muscle mass. And then the less protein you eat, the faster it goes away and the more likely you are to fall, break your hip, And then that is one of the biggest causes of death, really, like in older populations is the fall sends you to the hospital where you get the, you know, pneumonia or whatever that Mm -hmm. really takes you out. So it's like eating protein is great for everybody and everyone should eat more protein. So like I've gotten on this protein kick lately. So breakfast is protein shake, mm, like eggs, very simple. Maybe I'll have some sort of veggie with it but i'm not that hungry in the mornings that's really just like to get my protein yeah and then lunch is depends on what video i'm making that day because sometimes i will eat that for lunch so that's where it's something different every day it's like if i'm making a reel for the bacon wrapped pickle and cheese thing that'll probably end up being my lunch okay and then i'll have some like veggies to fill me up with that maybe a can of green beans or like some air fried carrots. Mm. And then my dinner is pretty much the same every night. It's I go to Costco and I get the big bag of blackened tenders. If you've ever had them, they're amazing. It's like frozen yeah. unbreaded chicken tenders. It's basically just like chicken breast with a lot of seasoning mm. on it. So I put those in the air fryer and I'll like cut them up, put them in some cauliflower rice or in a salad or on like a low carb tortilla. And then dessert is the same every night. I just microwave a bunch of frozen berries, put in some yogurt. Right now I'm doing Greek yogurt. There are you, you microwave the berries? Yeah, they're frozen. Okay. And I microwave them and they get all melty. Oh. And it's like it's almost like a it's not jam, but it, it has that vibe. Okay. So I'll add that with Greek yogurt and some like stevia to make it sweeter. And yeah, that's like a day of eating. Is your fiance keto? She is not keto, but she'll do it on and off with me. Okay. It's just one of those things where it's not for everyone. So yeah. Do you make an effort to like when you shop, do you get organic or or try to Mm. focus on that? Like I said, it's really just where I spend the most money on like high quality is I get the pasture-raised eggs, yeah. which are just like five times more expensive. Yeah, they're like, it's like eight bucks yeah, for a, a dozen eggs. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So that is where I spend the most money is pasture-raised eggs. I don't worry about organic veggies. There, I know there's like a dirty dozen. So there's a list of veggies and fruits that you want to get organic mm-hmm. because of pesticides or something. I don't really adhere to any of that. It's like keeping obesity away is my biggest concern so the lifestyle i'm living is more focused on that rather than like oh this specific sweetener that you're using is going to cause cancer 20 years down the road i'm I'm not worried about those things yeah and you might not be a a health expert in that field to where you want to share information like in your videos you might not want to go that in depth yeah that kind of stuff like focus on what you're good at and you've you've found that niche yeah, and and even if I do read studies, it, it's so like 
for if you really want to pick a team of oh veganism is the way oh carnivore is the way paleo is the way there are so many studies and then especially animal studies with just conflicting data like you can find you can build a case that anything is going to kill you and then you can also build a case that that same thing is the best food in the world and it's like amazing for your health so it's very confusing and i think the best advice i would have for the average person is just like just pick a healthy lifestyle and try to adhere to it and if you can't adhere to it pick something else and that's really all that matters it's yeah. just adherence something you could stay consistent yeah at that isn't going to drive you that's sustainable exactly that's what i've found is you know i've done these like 30 day challenges right before my first daughter was born and i got like pretty shredded in 30 days but the the lifestyle was insane yeah i was carrying a, a, a scale everywhere like weighing the broccoli <laughs> and the chicken that i was eating and like that's not sustainable yeah so funny you say that like the scale yeah so uh when i started keto i was 240 pounds and then i got down to like 160 just doing keto nothing else but then when my fiance got pregnant and we had the baby keto really just wasn't enough like especially with how many keto ice creams are on the market and all these fun keto foods it's like you can just go crazy and just oh and you can still overeat on keto which yeah. i was like news to me <laughs> so uh i started weighing my foods and i got really into tracking macros and uh i still do it to this day but it got to the point where I was like, all right, I lost the extra weight that I gained after the baby. And I'm like very comfortable where I'm at. But for me to get any lower and really get visible abs or like look shredded, I'm going to have to not be that happy. And to me, it's it's not worth it. It's like get to a healthy weight, you know, don't put yourself at risk of diabetes or yeah. becoming obese. But you also don't have to get to 6% body fat either. <laughs> no. And, you know, some people might argue that, that, you know, you need to do that. You need to be a certain body fat and, and this and that. Um, sometimes I feel like I work out to eat. Like I work out to be able to, you know, go to Chipotle and, and get the burrito with, double, you know, double steak and, yeah. and kind of go <laughs> a little, and, and – yeah, it's not fun. Like because we could be gone tomorrow, and it's like I was watching everything that I ate. Yeah, being so strict for, for what? But if it's worth it to you, then it's worth it. Oh to yeah, you. yeah. So and that's that's the other thing. I think for some people, it it really is so rewarding. Yeah. So in that case, it's worth it. Totally. But it's more rewarding for me to eat you know, the, the extra keto ice cream bar before bed after I've already had my yogurt. Yeah. It's like, all right, if I cut these out, maybe I could drop a few percentages of body fat, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the pain versus pleasure. Yeah. So I'm a big wing guy. Mm -hmm. Um, wherever I can go around town, I like getting wings. I've mastered making wings on a Traeger. Do you have a Traeger or like mm -mm. a smoker? I just have a grill. Okay. Maybe you need to reach out and do a little deal with Traeger. Yeah. They work with a lot of influencers. Yeah. Yeah. What's your go-to wing recipe? So I did wings the other day in the air fryer and uh, it's just quick 20 minutes. You pop them in for 10, flip them, put them back in for eight. And I, the key is to season them with add baking powder to the seasoning yep. and they'll get super crispy. Yeah. So that's what I do in my Traeger wings. Do you put flour or breading anything like that mm -mm. no what about you just dry them out no i just dry them out with the uh i season them with like salt and um a couple other just seasonings i have like general you know pepper garlic um just to give a little bit of of flavor and then baking powder mm. toss them in some baking powder i had a friend that i told him about that and he did it and he like dredged them in baking powder uh, and he said it was the most disgusting. They taste thing like he's metal. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like, no, you're just supposed to like dust them yeah. with baking powder. But no, that's that's a good one. So uh, go check out his wing recipe. Before we wrap up, are there any kind of projects or or things you're working on? You just came out with a book. What would you 
tell us what you would find in that book or who might buy it. And then is there anything else you're working on that, you know, might be coming down the pipeline? Yeah, I just released my new book, Carefree Keto. It's really for the average person who's trying to live a healthier lifestyle, whether they want to do keto, a low carb lifestyle, or whatever they can realistically stick to has all of that information. So you can get that on Amazon. Okay. Yep. Um, Amazon, you have two books though. I do. The first one is called Breaking Up With Carbs. Breaking Up With Carbs. And that was uh, just like the first version of how I felt about keto at the time. Okay. Both of them are filled with tons of recipes, meal plans, all of that stuff. All right. So check out his books on um, Amazon and tell us again where we can find you on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, anywhere else. Yep. So Keto Snacks with a Z on all social media platforms. And yeah, that's uh, where I'll be. Searching that on um, YouTube will find you? Yes. I do YouTube shorts now. So Okay. Yep. Cool. All right. Go check out Eric on all the platforms. Get your Keto Snacks in. Um, I was scrolling today and and have some recipes that i'm going to be working on so i appreciate you coming in and good luck with all the ventures coming down the pipeline yeah thank you so much for having me this was great awesome